Week four is upon us, and the Scarlet Knights are back home this coming Saturday to take on the Fighting Illini of Illinois. Welcome, everybody, to the Rutgers Football Podcast, presented by RWJ Barnabas Health, the official health care provider of Rutgers Athletics. I'm Chris Carlin, as always, joined by my partner, Eric Legrand. Big E, how you doing? I'm doing awesome, Chris. How are you? I'm great. And Rutgers now one and two on the year after the tough loss at Ohio State, but boy, played exceptionally well in the second half of that game, outscoring the third ranked Buckeyes 24 to 14. E, what were your impressions of what transpired in Columbus this past Saturday? You know, that, that second half really showed the never ever giving up mentality that this team has. Outscoring the Buckeyes 24 to 14 in the second half is impressive because the Buckeyes wanted to get some of their backup players in there to get them some experience but the Scarlet Knights weren't having it they were going to test them that you know that that entire second half so they, they could show the team that they do have but if coach Shiano imagine they you know they they made those adjustments coming into the game obviously halftime adjustments you see what they're doing out there but imagine they played a full game like that it could have came down to the wire the way that they were playing I know Justin Fields played out of his mind you got to see him in person I compared him to Russell Wilson watching him just his precision his decision making doesn't make mistakes. He just reminded me of Russell Wilson. But besides, you know, that the Scarlet Knights, they played pretty well in that second half and they were able to be disruptive up front against that Ohio State offensive line, Chris. Ohio State has a lot of work to do if they want to win that national championship up front because the Scarlet Knights were able to wreak some havoc in the backfield. Well, let's talk about that. First of all, Rutgers has some players right up the top. Uh, of the Big Ten in terms of tackles for loss. In fact, they lead the Big Ten in tackles for loss with 27 so far this year through three games. Some pretty impressive numbers. And, boy, Ola Kunle Fadakasi is having a fantastic season so far at the middle linebacker spot. Yeah, he's flying around making plays. And we know with a Coach Shiano led defense, those linebackers are going to make plays. And they're going to have double-digit tackles almost every game because – just the way that the defense is designed with each person controlling their own gap and just flowing, letting that, that running back flow to the to the linebacker, just flow in the right positions. And when they don't, then the defensive lineman gets in there and gets a little bit of that TFL life to tackle for loss. So it's very cool to see. And he is just now a veteran of this defense. He goes out there week in and week out prepared. He knows what it's like playing in the Big Ten week in and week out. And he's having fun. And you, you love to see the success for a kid like that, you know? And you mentioned the disruptiveness on the defensive line. Julius Turner so far, Eric, he really looks like he's taking advantage uh, of his speed advantage that he has up front, that quick first step. So playing in that nose, that tilted 1V look that he plays in, is perfect for him. You know, under Coach Ash's defense, he was a little bit outmatched because of where he was playing. Right now, he has that advantage having that little quick tilt, being able to get right up on the center, and he's very twitchy. He comes all out of his stance and boom, he's right on you. So the center's right away getting knocked back. And as soon as he gets that little bit of knockback, it disrupts everything with the offensive line. And he's found a way to be able to do that. And even on his blitzing, when he the center's thinking he's going to come right at him, I've seen him so many times whoop, slip right around to the other side. So it's, the, it's, it's always, he's very consistent so far on how he's been able to play and being so disruptive in the backfield. And I said, if you get that little bit of knockback, messes up everything from the get-go, and that's why they have 27 tackles for loss so far three games through the season. Look at the offense, and they were able to move the football. You know, they were able to do some things on the ground, season highs in terms of running and passing and total yards all together. Eric, evaluate the offense for me. What are you seeing from the player perspective? I'll tell you what, man. That second half, I was very impressed. The way that they were able to move the ball up and down the field. As we know, and we're finally getting to see Bo Melton is a special player. He is just athletically gifted. He looks like he's on a different level out there, even against Ohio State players. On that one punt throwback that they had to him, he just looked different out there. He looks like he's on a whole other level. But Shaheem Jones getting involved. Isaiah Pacheco, I'm looking really, I want to see them get even better on the ground game when it comes to those three running backs. There's so much potential in all three of them. Aaron Young, Isaiah Pacheco, and Kron Adams. I think we're going to start seeing a little bit more of a dosage of them. And even if they have three of them lined up on the field at once, you can split some of them out in that slot position. I think Coach Gleason is going to get them involved a lot more because there's just so much potential. They have the weapons. 
Talk about opening up the playbook. You mentioned the throwback. They had two of them on returns, including the <laughs> opening kickoff return of the game, another one to Bo Melton, and two different guys who have to throw the football, and Aaron Crookshank and, and Avery Young. First of all, those were some pretty good throws. <laughs> those throws were on point. That's the hardest part of the play. You can catch the ball, you can run up, but stopping on a dive and making a precision pass that has to go behind you. You can't throw it forward. It has to go behind you. And throwing the drop dead right there, so you can sail it out of bounds, or you could throw it short. They've been on point with their throws, and that sets up everything. And O'Mel, you give him the ball and watch him does do what he does. But um, yeah, they, they're getting you know extra creative with it. How about Raekwon O'Neal as big as Ray Lucas will call the big fatty up front, getting some love and getting a touchdown to throwbacks. As we know, Coach Chiano does that. Did it with Jeremy Zuda. He did it with Anthony Davis, and now Raekwon O'Neal. It's really cool just to see just. It's even not if it's only offense, even special teams, just explosive plays through the trick play and gadget game that the Scarlets have been able to execute. That's the hardest thing. It's not easy to do that. You know, when you're doing that and you're on special teams and, and the execution has mm -hmm. been very good this year in a lot of ways for Rutgers, you know, what do you think has been the difference in the team being, ex being able to execute plays like that because that can go wrong in a hurry on a team. Chris, I've been talking about this since Coach Shannon got hired. The attention to detail of every little part of the football game. They, they don't get too many reps of doing that. He said they practice them on Sunday nights and a little bit during the week. But I'm telling you, when you're going through those reps in practice, and even in the, in the film room, the coaches are on top of you. They want to make sure you know exactly what to do, where to be, because you need those plays to happened in order for it to go successful because if it goes wrong it could go very bad so just harping on every single detail where you need to be make sure you're not holding because you know how hard it is to hold blocks for that long of a time and make sure you're not holding the defender and baiting the defender to go this way but also making sure you don't give him a free release to go smack your guy it's not easy to do so they've been able to execute this to a T without any penalties and that's very impressive and an opportunity this week as Illinois comes to town, another chance to, to, to get a W and to get back home and a good chance to do that. But, Eric, uh, something we're going to talk to Coach Chiano about in a few minutes, and I wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, they get home very late at night, and then they turn around, and they've got a 12 noon game this week. From a player perspective, the rest versus the work at this juncture of the season, three games in, uh, how do you handle that as a player? It's a grind, <laughs> It's not easy. It's going to be out. There will be some tired, uh, you know, players during the week. You know, you try to catch up on that sleep a little bit later in the week. But in the beginning, when you get back at 3.30 in the morning on Sunday, you know, we usually have to be in by 12 o'clock. Hopefully, they allow me, you know, a little bit later in the day. Day gets a little bit started a little bit later. But that means the night might just go a little bit longer. But, you know, usually later towards the week coming into that Thursday, Friday, that's when you get to catch up on your sleep. But in the meantime, those days, well, that's Sunday, that's a, gr a whole day grind. Monday is your off day, but it's not really an off day. You're getting, making sure you're getting your game plan. You're going through film on your own. Some people are lifting, treatments, and things like that. And then Tuesday, you're back out there at that practice field. So those first few days, it's definitely, you know, taxing. But usually, you know, coach knows when they gear down on, on the players in certain times. Like, okay, let's not push them on this. You know, we need to relax our bodies a little bit more. Players just got to be disciplined to make sure at night, when they do get home, they're not sitting up playing video games. They're huh. going to bed and getting the proper rest. We'll talk more with the coach about that in just a few minutes. And Eric mentioned him earlier. Bo Melton is going to join us in just a little bit. We're just getting the ball rolling on this week's edition of the Rutgers Football Podcast, presented by RWJ Barnabas Health, the official health care provider of Rutgers Athletics. Week four of the Rutgers Football Podcast rolls on. And as always, time to chat with the head coach, Greg Schiano, who joins us right now. Coach, and we appreciate the time as always. And after looking back, watching the tape at the Ohio State game, how did you evaluate what happened out in Columbus outside of the result? Well, you know, I thought our guys, they played hard. We made a lot of mistakes in the first half. Certainly Ohio State's abilities were part of us making mistakes, but some of them were, you know, I always break mistakes into self-inflicted and, and opponent-inflicted, and uh, we had too many self-inflicted um, mistakes that really hurt us 
um, in the first half. There were some times in special teams and on defense where we could have been off the field and we didn't do uh, our job. So that that hurts, and that's how you fall behind. You do that against a good team like that, you fall behind. To our guys' credit, they came out and fought really, really hard, and um, I thought performed well in the second half. But, um, you know, we went out there to win the game, and we didn't do that, so we're disappointed. But uh, we got an opportunity now against a, a, a good Illinois team who's getting a lot of their players back from the COVID situation they had. And uh, we, we have a, a really tough game at noon on Saturday. You know, Coach, there is a new energy here. Fans have an excitement about what's happening here. There's a new optimism for the future, but you have stressed just that, how hard these guys are working to win now. So can you speak to that and, and how the team handles that? Well, it's hard, right? When you put all the effort that you do into the week's preparation and then you go play the game and it doesn't go your way, as I've said many times, there's a mourning that goes on. I mean, it it crushes you. But the beauty of our sport is there's no time to to cry in your cry in your soup because you got to go. I mean, you 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 have a game, and you know we have a countdown clock here in the building, uh, all over the place that comes up on our, all the TV screens, and it's a very very um, certain re- reminder that it's coming. Kickoff's coming, whether you're ready or not, it's coming. So you have no choice but to roll up your sleeves and go back to work, and that's what we do. And uh, we just, you know, had a really good practice, um, hot, working on a little less sleep than you'd like probably for our players, getting home at 4 in the morning on Saturday night. But they went out and they worked hard. So that's that's a credit to them. Uh, tomorrow we need to have a great practice if we're going to have a chance to play well on, on Saturday. And, you know, Coach, you may fans may not look at it this way, Um, But every hour is so critical for you in terms of your preparation. And because of that, a noon game off of getting home so late the other night, it really does make a big difference, doesn't it, in terms of time and rest for the team? And there's no doubt for the team and for the staff. I mean, you know, the coaches, they have to they have to be on on their best to put together the game plans. And if you're operating on less sleep, I don't know, you you know, science would tell you you're not working at your at your highest optimal level. So. It's a real balancing act as the head coach. You know, we got to get the stuff done, but we got to have guys that are fresh and ready to coach hard and ready to play hard. So um, as you get into the season, those are some of the more complicated things. Uh, you know, everybody wants to play night games, right? That means you're, you're in prime time, and I love it too. But there's a cost to that, um, and you have to know how to manage it. Coach, you mentioned the weather. I'm curious, you know, you always hear coaches talk about loving having some hot weather during training camp to really – help from a conditioning standpoint. I'm curious to get it at this juncture of the season. Do you like having it? Do you like having a little extra energy having to be expended when you're going through practice? As long as our guys replenish that when we're done, right? And that takes uh, discipline. It takes effort. You know, they need to make sure that they get replenished. Otherwise, tomorrow, they're going to dip into the reserves even more. And what happens, it's a cumulative effect that by the end of the week, they're, they're worn out. So we have to make sure as a staff that we are constantly instructing and educating on, on what we need to do. You know, when they're doing that, Coach, the balance of that rest versus the work uh, at this time of year, when you're into the season, in terms of the education, what are the key points that you try to get across to them when it comes to taking their care of their bodies physically and mentally? Well, I mean, we have experts, right, in in the medical field on our staff that talk to them all the time. Uh, The benefits of just getting another hour of sleep a night are tremendous. I mean, huge. You're talking about a 10 to 15 percent increase in your reflexes and your response time. Um, So these are studies. These this isn't Coach Yano making it up or some assistant coach making up. It is scientific, and you know we have all the latest technology to help keep track of how we're doing and um, we utilize it all. So it's, it's, it's very extensive and our players know that they have the best um, science to help them develop. Now they have to do it though, right? They have to eat right. They have to drink enough fluids. They have to get enough sleep. 
and they're college kids. So, I mean, you know, there's a lot going on, but what we try to do is educate them to that and the benefits that they can have if they do it. Your coaching staff working together, fans always look at the team, um, playing together for the first couple of games, how they're coming together. I'm curious as to how it's different, what you learn as a head coach about your new coaching staff when you finally get into the season and you're a few games in. Well, uh, I have familiarity with some of my staff, so I'm not learning a ton there, but there are some guys that we haven't worked together, so I've learned a bunch, how they handle themselves, how game day is for them. Um, and that's kind of a work in progress always, right? Because you always have some turnover. And you really just want to make sure that guys' individual preferences can fall within the vertical alignment of the organization. And as long as that works, then then it's good. If if people's way they do things falls outside of the vertical alignment, then they got to change. You know, it's, the program is the program. Coach, we will get to the questions from the fans here in just a moment. Stay with us. This is the Rutgers Football Podcast presented by RWJ Barnabas Health, the healthcare provider of Rutgers Athletics. Your chance to ask Coach Chiano your questions as the Scarlet Knights prepare for Illinois this coming Saturday at SHI Stadium at 12 noon. First question comes in on Twitter. It's hashtag RUFootballPodcast. Coach, uh, this is from Joseph. What's been behind Bo Melton's productivity increase this season? Uh, right now, he's on a pace for 45 catches in just nine games. Bo's worked incredibly hard since we've arrived. I think he and Coach uh, Underwood have a really close relationship. And um, I think Coach Underwood has taken his his game to another level, but it's all because Bo's been willing to buy in and do the work. So I, I'm really excited about Bo. I think he's got a lot left in the tank. I think he's got a lot more room to improve. And you can't teach the thing that he has, and that's speed and explosiveness. Craig wants to know, our Coach, are we going to see more freshmen playing in the coming weeks? Now, as an example, this past week we saw more of Aaron Lewis on the defensive line. I think you will see more freshmen play every week. Um, as they become comfortable doing all the things they have to do at their position, uh, then we become more comfortable, and that's when they get to play. And uh, we have some talented freshmen. I'd love to see them play, but never at the cost of the, the, what's best for the team. Jim wants to know about 03, Olakunle Fadakasi. His impact on defense this year has been immense. Uh, he leads the Big Ten in tackles, and he is second in tackles for loss this season. Impact of 03, Coach? Well, I think 03 is having a really good year. Uh, he's working very hard. It's not like uh, he's just, you know, he's a good player and it's happening. He works his tail off in preparation. And he's he's gifted. So you put those two things together, usually you have a good football player and he's playing at a high level. You know, you see a lot of your defense right now. Uh, there's a few of those guys that are atop the leaders uh, in the Big Ten in a lot of these categories. Yeah, it's early. I mean, there some guys, you know, can you do it? Can you sustain it over time? That's consistency is the sign of a good defense. But you got to do it for a few games before you can do it for a bunch of games, right? So uh, those guys that are really being productive, they need to keep doing it. And some guys that maybe haven't been as productive need to step it up a notch because I think we have a chance to have a pretty good defense, but only if we continue to develop every single week. Mary asking about the offensive line coach, evaluate how they have played through the first three games. I think we're getting better. Um, we have to understand, we have to all work together. I don't think it's fair to put protection only on the O-line. I don't think it's fair to put the run game or lack of run game on the O-line. We all have to work together. We're, we're developing in every phase of our program and Quarterback getting rid of the ball makes your protections look better. Running backs running where the play is designed to go makes your O-line look better. That all works hand in hand, and that, that always has. Um, unfortunately, sometimes I think disproportionate blame gets placed on a different group. Now, we have to do a better job of, of physically playing more physical. Right? That, that's something that we have to do for sure. Uh, and finally, Dave asking about the influence on and off the field that a guy like Aaron Crookshank uh, has had on the team. We've seen another guy 
his productivity increased greatly at the wide receiver position, had just four career catches before he got here and 14 this season. Well, Aaron, Aaron is a really gifted player for sure, but he's got such a great energy about him. I mean, he brings it every day to the practice field, and I think that his energy raises our energy. So I think those guys are, are truly important to your chemistry of your team. So we, we sure are glad he's here. Coach, finally, a preview of Illinois. You spoke uh, about them a little bit earlier, uh, getting some of their players back from dealing with COVID. Uh, what do we see here from the Illini and Lovey Smith's team uh, in terms of getting ready for Saturday? Well, you know, offensively, their quarterback, Peters, is out with COVID. So we will see one of two guys probably, and it'll be a heavy run-based quarterback run slash read uh, spread offense. They can throw, um, but I think it's going to be more heavy run. Um, the running back, they have a series, they have a group of running backs, but their, their one running back went over 100 yards last week for the first time in a while. So uh, he's, that's 24. He's, um, he's a good player, but they have, they have several good players in the backfield. Uh, defensively, as a defensive unit, they do the best job I've seen of people stripping the football. You can see that's something that Coach Smith does and really works hard uh, to, to get his guys to do that because it's every single guy in the defense goes after the ball. It's not one or two. So it's coached, and it's, it's a really important thing in their program. You can see it. So we're going to have to be very, very good at protecting the ball and doing the things we do with ball security. Uh, otherwise, that could create some big problems. Coach, good luck this week. We will see you on Saturday at SHI Stadium. Always good to be home. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Look forward to it. We'll be back with more with Eric, and we'll visit with the aforementioned Bo Melton in just moments. Stay with us. This is the Rutgers Football Podcast, presented by RWJ Barnabas Health, the official health care provider of Rutgers Athletics. Week four of the Rutgers Football Podcast continues. Excited to talk to this young man. And today's interview is brought to you by RWJ Barnabas Health, the official health provider. <clears throat> Let me do that again. Sorry. Three, two, one. We continue. It is week four of the Rutgers Football Podcast. And excited to talk to this young man who's had a great year so far. He is Bo Melton. And today's interview with Bo is brought to you by RWJ Barnabas Health, the official health care provider of Rutgers Athletics and New Jersey's most comprehensive health system. To learn more, visit rwjbh.org. Let's be healthy together. Bo joins us right now, and you've been busy. Every time we turn around, you're finding different ways to get the football, and you found the end zone again this past week. How you doing, Bo? Good. How you doing, Chris? We're doing great, and and that's the first thing, Bo. Just how much you have uh, enjoyed uh, this season so far, and uh, as productive as you have really been. I heard you talk about your relationship with Coach Underwood last week. Uh, explain to us how he's had a big influence for you so far. Um, yes, Coach Underwood, we have a great relationship. Um, going through practices and stuff like that, we just perfect our craft really. And um, when we go out there, we just go out there to work. He preaches out a lot, he preaches our, our technique, and he tells us how much of our technique means a lot to the, our game and how we can get better every day as like receivers wise. But really me and Coach Underwood are really close and every day just gives me different stuff I got to work on and I just perfect it. And I love, you know, stories of adversity and just overcoming obstacles. And Bo, you coming in, dealing with, you know, different staffs and having to deal with different coaching and picking up different philosophies. And you've been able to really excel now you're going into your senior year with Coach Gleason's offense and now Coach Underwood as as Chris just mentioned, what is it like now playing in Coach Gleason's offense and also getting involved with special teams? Oh, yeah. Coach Gleason is a very good coach. You know, he had one of the explosive offenses back when he was at Oklahoma State, but now he came here and he's very explosive. He's a very good guy, very energetic. He, like, brings the juice every day, and I just love how he is, and that's the type of guy I am. I was, like, bringing the juice to the, the team and along with my other uh, players, stuff like that, and this was his offense. He's very unique with who he puts in certain positions and puts in spots to make plays. And you mentioned special teams, yeah. Um, I have started playing special teams more than I used to, and mm -hmm. really, yeah, just trying to excel, trying to just put me on, on the field with, um, with a great returner like AC, just as I like, put some weapons back there and just to make it better. And uh, I really love the role that they gave me. 
Yeah, but let's talk about the the two plays from last week. The the two throwbacks. First of all, Aaron throwing you one on the opening kickoff, and then Avery Young later on. Kind of take us through those and how those unfolded, especially the touchdown and the punt return. Oh yeah, um, Aaron really threw a good throwback um, on a kickoff return, and really uh, timed that up and just got like out to the forty five yard line somewhere around there. And that was a good play and for the play for the punt return. Um, Avery threw it back to me, and uh, I just saw a seam. Um, I had a lot of good blockers on that play. Everybody really did their job, and they really ran and blocked for me that play, and I just told them I needed uh, some space and some time, and that's all they gave me. And I appreciate Avery. He made – a lot of people don't see, like, he made uh, through the pass and came all the way back down to block the kicker that was in front of me. And um, I just praised them because they, they made it open for me. And really, those are my teammates, and that's what we talk about when we talk about family, and they just sacrificed. And they gave me an opening, and I took it. So. Chris and I were talking about this earlier in the show, Bo, on the execution of those plays, because I know, and you know, being in practice, you do them a few times and you get to practice. I mean, how, you know, you don't get as many reps as you would get in an offensive practice. Talk about what it's like talking about the plays in the, in the film room then bringing it out to the practice field and just the minute details that coach goes down to on every one of those plays so you can execute them so there's no blocking in the back or no holding. Right, exactly. Um, really, bringing everything to the film room and to the field is like difficult sometimes. And really, with Coach Coach Chiano, he really preaches do your job, and you executing your job will help everybody else. Everybody else, because everybody will be executing their own job. And if you just go through go through your plays and go through what you have to do on that certain play, you will evolve into going on the field and everybody doing their job and the play will work. And really, from the film room to the field is kind of like hard for people, but for us. When we just do our job and we just tech, get our technique and the little details. We um, execute the plays that we should execute. And so I'm happy for our team to really just bring the film room to the, uh, the field. Rutgers wide receiver and returner Bo Melton is with us. Man, it's, you're talking about being a family affair at Rutgers. Your father, <laughs> Gary, of course, wide receiver and running back in the late 80s, early 90s. Your mom, Vicky, played basketball. And now you got a little brother here. So first of all, it, what's it like to have a little brother here? Is it like having a little brother who's driving you nuts all the time, or is it just fun to have Max here now? It's very fun. You know, Max is, um, that's my little brother, and it, all my life, um, he's really been there, like, through everything. I played with him my senior year of high school also. And so him, just seeing him evolve and seeing him become the man that he is now has really been a blessing because a lot of people don't get that opportunity. And especially having my mom and dad here that played here, um, my dad played kick return, and I, now I play kick return. I wasn't playing before. It kind of brings light to both of us, and we can connect and stuff like that on other levels. And as for my mom, just playing basketball here, it's like a family legacy. And my brother kind of put the stamp on it. I'm just committing here and playing here now, and he's doing very good, and I'm happy for him. And it's just been like a good blessing that God has given us. And can Britain, tell me what it's like now. You know, I need to know who's talking junk. He's on offense. You're on defense. You guys get to go up against each other. I need to know who's talking the most junk when you win one rep or he wins one rep. Are you just like, I got you, little brother? Like, yeah, I got you, little bro. Or at least in your face, like, you can't see me. I need to know who's talking the most junk. Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing. Me and my brother are like silent towards each other. You know, uh, really? that's the little thing. Um, Who's talking the most junk probably Coach Fran, the defensive player. He's like the best coach. <laughs> you gonna let your brother beat you, you're gonna let your brother beat you. Just go back and forth like that. Me and Max have a little we we know when we beat each other, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, like we don't get on each other like that. But <laughs> it's just because of the we've been going against each other all of my whole life. So like it's kind of like hand hand in hand, like, okay, he got me that rep or I got him that rep. But it's all to make each other better. But really, who gets on each other a lot? It's Coach Fran. I'll give it to him because he's just right there in our faces every time. Like, you get him max, get him max. And this is everything. And I love it. That was competition. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, how, just how energizing has this whole season been for you guys to not just get to have a season after everything that's happened, but Coach Chiano's presence and the new energy uh, that's back in the building? Yeah, it brings a lot of, like, energy to the building. You know, Coach Chiano is a great coach. You know, he just brings the juice every day. And just bringing the juice every day just gets people around um, hype. Just for the day, he wants to go out there and practice. He wants to go out there and be better, get better every day. And he preaches everything, do your job, and he brings it to the whole staff and the whole and the whole players. And so when we all just have the energy, all have the juice, we go out there wanting to practice, wanting to get better every day. It kind of helps the program, helps to build them up, and not just going out there 
and just saying, oh, it's just a Tuesday or Wednesday, and let's go practice. We all had the juice. We all wanted to win. So we had a mindset coming here. Just, hey, this is the practice here. Just get better. Let's make each other better today. Let's compete. And let's just go out there, and that's what's going to take the win. So we just know how hard it is to win in the Big Ten, and we know that if you want to win the Big Ten, you got to go out there and practice every day because practice is everything. So. And what's it like for you being a leader of this team and trying to keep everyone focused on the task at hand they're going through? All this adversity that's been thrown your way with the new coaching staff coming in, adapting to their principles, but now also trying to stay disciplined, making sure that you guys don't contract the coronavirus and being able to have this football season. How has it been as a leader for you leading these guys? Yeah, Coach Shanna always always preaches um, our number one enemy is COVID and COVID-19. And really, that is our number one enemy. You know, we have to stay away from a lot of people out there because we play football every day. You can't get, if you get it in the Big Ten, it's, um, you're out 21 days. And we just uh, preach to our players as a leader of the team and as all of our leaders on the team, our leadership council, we really preach to our, our players like, hey, man, like if you go out or anything, just be protected. Always wear your mask. You know, if you go get some knee, wear your mask. And really, that's just our number one enemy. I know we have other opponents, uh, opponents during the week, but we got to make sure we beat the coronavirus before we play. And that's the biggest thing he said to us. And just the discipline of us being disciplined and just um, going by the rules that Coach Yano gives us is really the biggest thing. Well, Bo, it's been awesome to watch you so far this season. It's obvious you're having a ton of fun, and we appreciate you joining us for a few minutes. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate you guys. That's Rutgers senior wide receiver Bo Melton giving us some time. He's been explosive. A lot of fun to watch so far this season with the Scarlet Knights. We'll take a break. Come back. And when we return, we will preview the matchup with the Fighting Illini in just moments on the Rutgers Football Podcast, presented by RWJ Barnabas Health, the official health care provider of Rutgers Athletics. Saturday at noon, it is Rutgers and Illinois squaring off at SHI Stadium. Chris Carlin, Eric Legrand, back on the Rutgers Football Podcast, RIE. Scarlet Knights get two in a row at home, but first up, the Illini before Michigan comes to town next week. Brandon Peters, their quarterback, is still out due to COVID issues, but they are a team that is itching to get a win right now. Yeah, you're talking about having to adapt that mentality of next man up. Illinois has been struck with that all season long with all the players that have had COVID, next man up, next man up mentality. You know, it's not easy for them. It's going to be a battle for them, but hey, Scarlet Knights are looking, it's going to be a battle for them as well. No game is easy in the Big Ten. That's why you play the game, because you never know what can happen out there. And the Scarlet Knights just have to have that mentality of going in there and focusing on being 1-0 and this week and playing Rutgers football the way that they know how to. Eric, where are you looking for the biggest improvement this week? It's going to be, I think it's going to be in the run game. Ohio State, they try to get their running game going a lot. It's hard, you know, with that defensive front that they have. They found a little bit of success here and there. But I think Gleason is really going to try to harp on getting that run game where you get, you know, six, seven, eight yards a clip type of ordeal, you know, and plays like that. And whether if it's even a jet sweep plays or a straight power up the middle or if you're doing zone scheme, I think we're going to see a heavy, a heavy doses of the run game a little bit and see if he can get some of those backs some success. Eric, has there been an aspect through the first three weeks that you feel like maybe has been a little bit underrated in how – Rutgers has played so far? So this is going to be interesting. I'm glad you brought that up. We got to see that Ohio State, the three quarterbacks. So you get Noah, who's the starter quarterback, obviously. He controls the offense. He does what he does to get them down the field. Johnny Langan getting a little bit now more use of down in the goal line where he's actually throwing the ball a little bit now. And it's not just so predictable that he's going to run it and he's scoring down there. And then Art coming out to run a two-minute drill. I said, you know, maybe they brought out Art out there because he has a little bit of a stronger arm to push the ball down the field. But he controlled that that two minute offense drill masterfully. That was a perfect way to drive down the field on that on that Ohio State defense. Of course, at that you just you know the Bo Mount was wide open in the end zone, and now unfortunately the ball slipped out of his hands. But you know, I think that's a little bit underrated how the Scar Knights have multiple ways now of bringing in quarterbacks. I know everyone says you got two quarterbacks, three quarterbacks, you don't have one quarterback, but no. Scott has been able to find success using three different quarterbacks. And, and boy, how much credit do you have to give Langan? Johnny has really embraced this Taysom Hill type role <laughs> with the Saints, and he's shown that he can catch the football, throw it, and run with it. And that's the great thing about watching him out there, Eric, is he just adds this 
incredible element of unpredictability to what they're going to do. He's so versatile as a defense. When you have to account for the quarterback, it makes it just that much harder. And it makes you take that one step forward just because you think he's coming at you. And that's how a tight end slips behind you. And you're like, oh, shoot. And there's a touchdown. And they bring him in always in those goal line packages. And as a go, when you see him coming as a defense, you're like, oh, damn, here we go. Like, I got to deal with, all right, is he going to run his power at me? Is he going to do a zone replay, run to the outside? Is he going to try to, you know, throw a pass? It's just so hard to scheme for when you have a quarterback that can do it. And gives, you know, those defensive coordinators headaches trying to figure it out. And Scarlett has used it to their advantage to have it. All right, Eric, keys to the game this week. Pound the ball in the run game. Four, pound the ball in the run game. Find a way to get Noah Vedral in rhythm with those wide receivers. And offensive line, continue to protect Noah. I got to give them credit. One sack versus Ohio State last week, very, very impressive. They deserve credit. Continue to keep that up. Defensive side, turnovers. Got to find a way to take the ball again. Continue to get those TFLs, but turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. I'm looking to hopefully the Scarlet Knights will see them again stepping up in that column, you know, two, three, or four turnovers. Looking forward to it, Eric. Rutgers back at home Saturday, 12 noon. We'll talk to you then, bud. Sounds good. Of course, you can catch the game on BTN and on the RWJ Barnabas Health Rutgers Sports Network with myself, Eric, and Ray Lucas. Mark Malusis and Julian Pennix Odrick will be by at 11 a.m. with the pregame show as well. And don't forget to check out the Facebook Live feed with all the sights and sounds from SHI Stadium. You can't be there right now, and we cannot wait to have you back there, but we can bring some of those sights and sounds to you. So we're looking forward to that. Make sure you check out the Rutgers football Facebook page this week for that. For Eric and the coach, I'm Chris Carlin. We'll see you next week. Thanks so much for joining us on the Rutgers football podcast presented by RWJ Barnabas Health, the official health care provider of Rutgers Athletics.